Right, this is a poem about tea time. Right, here we go. Can you imagine my tea is so nice? Sweet with sugar, full of spice. Making me sigh, I was hungry and blue. Their sponge was a beauty, my fluffy and smooth. Full cream milk, warm by keeping a rest. I quench my thirst, inwardly digest. I drink the thoughts, they always delight. If you feed my mind, I take some big bites. Fish on the dish, salty and hot. I eat her plenty, and all that she's got. Her buffets are always a jolly good spread. She always makes sure I get well fed. We make a loaf, she lets it grow. Rising in the oven, baking in the dough. I was never starved, no girl could beat her. She was so tasteful, I just had to eat her. Right then, fiendish little circles. Following footsteps faintly in the snow. I've got the scent, I know which way to go. Fiendish little monster smells like food. Over fields, into woods, I look behind every tree. The scent is strong, I expect it will jump out. I hear myself breathing whilst quietly looking about. Suddenly in my face, a smiling circle with a frown. I smack him over the head, terminally beat him down. Left in excited shock, I'm ready to eat. Starting at the bottom with its candy flavoured feet. I feel other monsters watching from afar. Eyes blinking in the darkness, little bastards. Right, this is a poem called Broken. Mirror, mirror, off the wall, how did you come to drop and fall? With silver slivers of pointed glass, how did this moment come to pass? The telling crash of noise abound, a multitude of division found. Strewn across the slippery floor, you fell and now you are no more. Than a memory of what used to be, a reflection now you cannot see. She went out of the window, smashed her mind like a pane of glass. When she spoke, it was like sharp glass all around me. The clear cut logic, complete with transparency. Disasters say so much, so clearly and precisely, but with such profound impact as to never to come out nicely. Okay, a little poem here to cheer people up. It's called Melancholy Turtles. I'm fast asleep, the rain pours down on this winter's day. My room is dark, the sky outside is grey. I'm like climbing up a clear space while gravity pulls me down. One jump, that's all it takes, this one slip to get me down. The icy ledge is my life, I'm feeling pretty cold. Dreaming, I can feel my feet slipping from my hold. It's just another day, as I wake up, I feel sad. Waiting for work at two o'clock, something I wish I never had. Turn up the stereo, play some jazz, man. Lay back in bed, I'm an avid jazz man. A watch on my wrist, ticking away the second hand. I'm conscious of the time, because I'll soon be in demand. Deep down inside, I've got the blues. Waiting for work is just bad news. It's Monday afternoon, and I'm starting work soon. Turn up the tape, it's a sad jazz tune. Rain has stopped, but the wind howls by. Clouds move fast across a winter's cold and sunny sky. I'm drinking cups of coffee, tasting pretty sour. Sitting on my bed, I've been contemplating here for almost an hour. I'm listening to some more jazz music on my stereo, whilst waiting for work on late shift, but I don't want to go.
Right there, I've got a poem about work. It's called Sunday Night and Monday Morning. I get in bed from rain I hide, under covers inside. Where I like to be, where my bed and I seem to agree. I'm tired, a physical state. The humming in my ears tells me I'm up too late. With legs like jelly, feet like lead, I feel I am the living dead. At around the midnight hour, there's a tapping on my window from the midnight shower. There's no one in the streets below, the cold is now beginning to show. It's winter time, but I'm feeling warm, although I'm not on top floor. The manic Monday lies ahead, so in the meantime, I'll savour this moment in bed. I wait to hear traffic below, you see outside falling snow. I smell fried breakfast, waiting to be washed down with a cup of tea. It's Monday morning, lazy and still. I ring up work, tell them I'm ill. This is a poem about mathematics. Here we go then. It's called The Abuse and Calculations of Perfect Patricia Lynch. Reciprocal Roger had nothing going on. He hurled abuse at Patricia until she was to the power of minus one. Roger became the man Patricia loved to hate. And over time she recovered back to her positive 28. Along came Chris to two decimal places. He was a radical son. He squarely rooted Patricia until she was 5.29. She lost her integrity, an integer no more. She decided to try cubic roots. This gives a really radical skill. It was only of a medium size, but accurate to five six feet. It opened Patricia's eyes. So now that Patricia has become an irrational surgeon, do you know what number of you? To 0 0.0001, to Patricia's horror, she found he was positively a relative error. But that's a good 